Hi, I'm Dr. Yasser Rifai from Morocco. This is the second part of the presentation how to read MS39 Corneal Anterior Segment OCT Topography. In this presentation, we will start with Keratoconus Summary Display. The Keratoconus Summary Display is an artificial intelligence to help us to diagnose keratoconus and ectasic uh, corneal diseases. It will uh, try to study the asymmetry of the tangential maps, the BCV, coma, trifold, and spherical aberrations, tangential maps, anterior and posterior, elevation maps, but compared to normality, it means that the reference surface is not a best fit sphere, but it is a normal cornea. It's a normal surface of cornea. Relative pachymetry map and notable points. And we will find the conclusion and it can be normal, abnormal, keratoconus and others. But this summary does not include epithelial mapping uh, study. So this summary only studies tangential maps, anterior and posterior, elevations compared to normal corneas, relative pachymetry, the asymmetry of tangential maps, coma and trifoil and spherical aberrations, and put the notable points in one map and see if they are in the same area. But this summary does not include epithelial mapping. And in this case, you will find normal. In this case, it will tell you keratoconus suspect. In this case, you will find keratoconus compatible. And in this case, you will see that there are abnormalities, but the, the points are not in the same area and it will be treated or abnormal. But the keratoconus screen in, indices provide indication, which however are not, are not sufficient for assessing either instrument calibration status or the patient's clinical situation. These indices should be should thus be considered as diagnostic tools only for the user, but not as indicator of certain diagnosis of keratoconus. Example of false negative of keratocon summary. So in this case, you will find normal case. Normal, but if you see the epithelial mapping, you will find this donut image, which is highly suggestive for early keratoconus. So this is a false negative. The, the MS39 is also a corneal, uh, a corneal aberometer or, uh, it, that measures the wave front of the anterior surface of the cornea of the posterior surface of the cornea, and it measures it in uh, three millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeters. And as you see here, it gives you the astigmatism, the amount of coma, trifoil, aber spherical aberrations, so all the aberrations, and you can quantify it. It will also give you in this display the, the quality of vision of the patient and the, the, the aberrations, like here in a, in a pyramid, so what are the uh, criteria of uh, keratoconus diagnosis? So here, with this device, you can you have a lot of criteria. So the, I think the first uh, criteria now uh, with this device is the epithelial mapping because the epithelial mapping is very sensitive to uh, uh, to early keratoconus we have 
the second uh, uh, criteria is the axial map which which will uh, uh, show you abnormalities asymmetry uh, skewed radial axis but sometimes the normality of this map uh, should not exclude early keratoconus because of the, the, the masking effect of the epithelium. And you have the uh, posterior elevation, which is abnormal. So the three parameters are epithelial mapping, anter anterior uh, sagittal map, and posterior elevation. But the first one, the first and this, the most sensible is this one epithelial mapping then posterior elevation then the uh, sagittal anterior map so if this map is normal and you have posterior elevation and you have uh, uh, a donut image it is a keratoconus and the uh, keratoconus display may help us but we cannot uh, uh, follow it uh, blindly in keratorefractive surgery, the decision is multifactorial. So you have to analyze all these parameters, anterior, posterior surfaces, pachymetry, epithelial mapping, and all this. You have to compare both eyes, right eye with left eye, and to look for enantiomorphism. You should analyze the corneal wavefront and look for high order aberrations, and then you uh, 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 you combine all this and uh, with the, the clinical data of the patient. So when you have major risks, at I mean asymmetry, abnormal elevation, donut image, uh, a, a very thin uh, cornea, and kerat keratoconus com uh, compatible, you should contraindicate any keratorefractive procedure. But when you have minor risk, a very small asymmetry in, in axial, uh, uh, axial map with normal elevation and, map, and mapping, uh, when you have a limit uh, thickness and all parameters are okay, you can go for surface ablation. And if there is no risk, you can go for LASIK, SMILE, or PRK, and it depends on clinical data and on uh, uh, surgeon's habits. You have also the glaucoma screening and you have this pachymetry map that helps you to correct the, 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 the IOP. You have the anterior chamber depth and you have the correction of IOP with different uh, formulas. You have a model for uh, ICS planning, intracornear ring segment implantation the device will not give you the plan but it will help you it means it will help you to give you the the axis of the coma you will choose the axis of the coma or the axis of the astigmatism it will uh, give you the the safety limits of the of the thickness and you will choose the surgeon will choose the 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 optical zone of the uh, of the ring, uh, it will it will choose the length of the ring. So the the device will help you with these parameters. You have the keratoconus progression follow up. So you capture this is the, an old capture, this is a new capture, and you will see here with the keratoscope the uh, the difference between the key readings the old key readings and the new key readings and here we have the progression differential map which is interesting difference and another case this is with tangential map before after and the difference so this uh, this display will give you uh, uh, different differential maps so it is uh, very useful in the progression of keratoconus in the results of uh, of uh, rings results of cross-linking 
of uh, of uh, uh, LASIK, of PRK, of all. Uh, uh, when you 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 change the 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 corneal thickness on you change the corneal uh, the corneal uh, shape, this device this uh, this uh, uh, display will help you to know uh, the, the the differential map. This is different differential map of elevations. You will uh, uh, you can use this device also for IOL calculations. So you should uh, you sh you should provide the the axial lens, and then uh, the you choose the lens you want, and the the device will give you the 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 biometry uh, without choosing any. Uh, any formula and the, the device uh, will uh, will calculate uh, uh, the data from the cornea and will see if the cornea is ablated or not if it is virgin cornea or, or it is a keratoconic cornea so it will uh, uh, do all this work for you and you you don't have to choose any formula and you have you have uh, always to correlate all images so in this case of uh, intracornea ring uh, implantation you will see the, the the OCT and then you will correlate with correlate with the four maps and you correlate with the the epithelial mapping in 3D so you have uh, this is the ring you have in this uh, uh, over the the ring you will have uh, a, th a thick a thinning of the of the epithelium it is it is here it's like a cowboy hat and you have here a remodeling effect of the, the epithelium that will thicken in this area and you have it here and you have the thickening of the, the epithelium so here you have you have the, the, the flattening effect of the ring and here you have the, the thinning over the ring and thickening inside When you have uh, a keratoconus with uh, this uh, donut image, but there is a thickening inside. In this, uh, in this case, you should uh, examine the OCT and you will find the opacities, you will find an irregularity of the stroma. So in every case of uh, epithelial mapping, you should uh, look uh, for the scans of the of the of the OCT scans. So to look for any uh, haziness or any uh, uh, the, uh, the irregularities or scars in the stroma. High resolution OCT. His, uh, you have here an OCT of a cornea with intracornea ring, and we, this is the tunnel of the ring which is closed. This is uh, an OCT scan of the anterior segment that help us to do uh, contact lens fitting, scleral lens fitting. This is another case here. This is a case of keratoconus with contact lens and you have these irregularities. Here you have, uh, it is not a keratoconus, but it is a dystrophy of the cornea and you have this scar. This is a case of a normal cornea but you have here a fake IOL and the, you can measure the vault. Here you have the uh, in high drops, a case of high drops. This is a case of corneal graft with contact lens fitting. Here you have a case of, uh, uh, of ad advanced keratoconus with uh, scars, with irregularity of the stroma and the filling effect of the epithelium. You can use also the ms 39 for pupillometry, which is uh, uh, very interesting. This is the, you, you will uh, study the pupillometry in uh, scotopic, mesopic and photopic. So here you have the, the scotopic pupil, it's an example, 7.5 uh, millimeters and here you have the photopic 
4.62 and this is a dynamic pluviometry which is uh, which will will calculate the the difference and the speed of the the movement pupillary, pupillary movement photomotor reflex tear film analysis uh, or non invasive breakup time it is very helpful in dry eye so here you have an abnormal uh, uh, abnormal uh, non invasive breakup time uh, you have an evaporation of t of uh, of uh, uh, tear film here you will have a curve with uh, a non invasive total uh, non invasive breakup time so the first uh, uh, the first uh, tear tear film that will evaporate you will have in this time and this is the average this one is the average and you have numeric data here and you can uh, examine it to diagnose the the dry eye and then to follow up the dry eye and you have the lens biometry you can uh, with this high high definition uh, uh, OCT you can measure the parameters of the lens and uh, you can you can measure the angulation and the, you can measure the, la the 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 depth of the lens so the this lens biometry is helpful to uh, diagnose some cases of uh, spherophakia. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, it was uh, I was very happy to do this uh, this course, and uh, I will do uh, other presentation uh, uh, for uh, every uh, every parameters of this uh, this uh, or every usage uh, for this uh, device and uh, thank you very much you can you can email me in this email you can uh, send me a message by this whatsapp uh, you can uh, send me on facebook instagram youtube thank you very much for your attention